Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I've got one last beer review for you from the haul from Festival, and this one is New Glarus Beering Company Back 40. Yes, I I drank half of this. It's Back 40 Bach. And it's a 12 ounce bottle, and let's see. If I recall, I don't think they do the ABV on these. Nope. These are the ones, or one of the ones, rather, that I had to look up online. So, unfortunately, if you want the ABV, you'll have to go on their website. And before I upload this, I will do what I've done before. And in the description or in one of the comments, I will... mention the ABV for this beer. Okay. Here's the legend on this one. The back 40 is property commonly found on onto the outskirts of the Wisconsin family farm. Here, uncultivated acres wait prime for adventures. Forts, tree houses, rope swings, and first kisses. A place to run away, to camp, to climb, to build, to play. Not actually home, but not too far away. That's the back 40. The beer you hold is similar, both dark and adventurous, still smooth and familiar. Here's a beer you can enjoy without pretense or explanation. Every mind requires some acres of possibility, space for dreams, a great escape. Everyone needs a back 40. Daniel and Deborah Carey, www.newglarisbrewing.com. And I will try to remember to link that in the description. But if I forget, I do try to remember to mention it in the video. And like I said, I do not know the ABV on some. Actually, you know what? If we pause this, I can get my second phone and check Google. I'll be right back. We're back. I forgot to charge up the backup phone, which I use as a mini tablet. And I really don't feel like... Res oh, I'm not resurrecting, but turning on my desktop computer, which I haven't used in a while, mainly because, like I said, I know I will hyper-focus and not get anything else done. Also, if I were better at it, I could literally use that vice, the laptop I was trying to get funds for several years ago, which I'm like halfway there, but I'm not totally worried about it at this point because my phone seems to do everything just fine. A laptop would be cool because, like I said, it would be easier for me to look at. I might still hyper-focus, but not as much as I would with the tap, with the desktop. I'm sorry, itchy nose. And now that the ACP is basically going away, um, using the big computer, I don't know. Well, I still have to pay for the internet whether I use the computer or not. Anyway, that's beside the point. Anyway, let's focus. Back around in a circle the phone that I use to look things up when I'm doing videos is charging. So I don't have enough battery on it to look up the AV, ABV. So we will just go ahead and add it in the description after the video is done and before I upload it. Sorry about that. Long winded. Let's get handy here and open this up and we have the wake up dead imperial stout glass today I like I said I only have two good pint glasses that I like this one and the Universal Studios monsters that I got a couple of Halloweens ago sadly the store I work at doesn't sell them anymore they keep changing their stock for Halloween and it gets cheaper every year so I'm, I'm going to have to, at some point, invest in some good, spooky beer glasses. So you're not having to look at the same two over and over. Plus, some of the boring ones, although some of the boring ones are classic beer shapes, which I still have to learn the types of, you know, there's Pilsner glasses, there's... I don't have a champagne flute for the Frambois but I don't drink champagne and my kitchen is rather small. 
about the size, actually, I think I had more cabinet space in my old place because that one didn't have a breakfast bar. It had countertop from one side around to the other. So this has less, less counter space. It's a smaller apartment, so I don't have as much space for cups and glasses or I would order more glasses when I get the money. Anyway, this what we have is what we have. It's smelling malt. And hops, but I'm smelling the malt first. For some reason, my nose is weird today. I'm getting, it smells like banana. I, I don't know why I'm reading banana. There's no banana in this, but for some reason this morning, the combination of the hops and the malt is reading banana to me. Well, you can taste the malt more than the hops. It's, more, it's a slightly more malt forward, at least to my palate anyway. Slightly sweet. A nice, rich, easy drinking beer, but again, I don't know the ABV. So unfortunately, I can't tell you if it's sessionable. From what I've seen, sessionable is basically a lower ABV brew because you can drink more of them. You can put it in a mixed white and have several without totally wrecking yourself. I'm going to have to guess at this point, I'm just going to guess and say that it's not sessionable because some, a lot of the darker beers tend to be a higher ABV from what I've noticed. So I'm going to say it's probably around six or higher, but I will look it up once I get the other phone fully charged and go on the New Glarus website and pull up this particular brew because you can do that. If I ever forget to post the ABV or list it rather either in a comment or in the description and we're doing a new Glarus, you can check the website. You can go on, you know, go on Google and look up the website and you will be able to find the ABV should I forget to mention it because for some strange reason they don't put it on the bottle or on the, on the carrier, on the carton. Yes, it's drinkable, but I, I'm going to say it's probably not sessionable. And I was thinking about a box I've had, Shiner Bach. And I don't think Shiner is local out here. I don't I think Shiner was something I could only get in New Mexico. Again, I'll have to look that up. Um, but for some reason, when I think of Bach, I think Shiner Bach. And I do recall I've had those. And I don't remember, I don't remember what it tasted like. So I can't say if I like this better or worse, more, more or less, I should say more. I can't say if I like it more or less than that because it's been years since I've had one of those. So I don't have a box to compare this to. But I am liking this, obviously, as the fact that I... Uh, tested, as attested to the fact that I only have three left. Two now. <laughs> when it's chilled, it's, it, it seems to feel brighter than when it's room temperature. You get a little tingle from the from the fizz from the carbonation. And you can kind of feel the fizz as as it goes down if that makes any sense. Like you do when you're drinking a soda. This is definitely a beer that's made for sipping and thinking about. I guess hence the name. You wanna just, you don't wanna chug this. You just, you do, you wanna sit 
and drink it and think about it and just relax and enjoy whatever it is you're doing or not doing. I'm not sure what kind of food you'd pair it with, honestly. It's a strong, it's a, I don't want to say it's a strong taste, it's a pronounced taste. It's not subtle, but it's not in your face either. So it would hold up well to something that's a little bit more intense. Um, you don't want it with a mild, I, a mild flavored food, obviously, because this, this will overpower any mild flavored food you have it with. So I strongly su suggest, sorry, if you have one of these, to try to pair it with something that will complement what you're, what you're eating without overpowering the food and also without overpowering the brew. So you don't want something, you want it so it balances, basically. You want it to balance out. You don't want them to cancel each other out. You want a nice balance. So I'm thinking, I don't eat beef anymore, but because for stomach reasons, but this seems like it would hold up well against beef. A nice barbecue or a brisket, maybe, maybe a steak. There used to be a restaurant showing my age, way back in the day, called Steak and Ale. This isn't an ale, it's a bock. But to me, it's kind of in that ballpark. It seems like it would go well with a nice juicy steak, like I said, or some kind of beef. Because it's got that, it's got a rope, it, like I said, it's, a, it's not in your face, but it's got a nice flavor to it. I guess I'm trying to say rich. That would be a good word, would be rich but not real thick. It's not quite cloyingly sweet. It's slightly sweet and with the malty character to it. So yeah, basically I'm, I'm repeating myself. I'm sorry. Yes, it's good. It's drinkable, not sessionable. It would probably pair well with some kind of beef. Um, so if I'm wrong, let me know in the comments. Let me know what you would pair it with, because like I said, I don't eat beef anymore. But something of a meatless variety, I guess, would work for me of an equal flavor profile and character, I guess. Anyway, it's drinkable, but probably not sessionable. To wrap this up, my rambly rant, not rambly rant, rambly, rambly review, slightly, I'm not trying to sound ranty. Um, yes, uh, give it a try. Don't drink too many of them. Pace yourself. Enjoy it. Just sit back and enjoy it. Whether you have it with a meal or by itself, cheese might be good too, but a stronger cheese, like a cheddar or some kind of cheddar, Colby, maybe crackers, bread. Like I said, something that's will balance. If you're, you know, whatever, you know, if you're doing anything like that, just sitting back and relaxing, having some cheese, having a cheese plate with maybe some meat, sausages, um, or a steak, brisket, whatever, or just even by itself, it's nice. You know, just relax and enjoy the beer. Just sip it. Don't chug it. Just drink it. Take your time and enjoy it. It's definitely like it. Again, it's a hit. I don't think there's been any new glarus ones that have been a miss. There are some brews that are lower on my list that I would probably drink but not buy again right away. And I won't mention them here because I'm not doing a review for one of those. And if you've done enough watching of my videos, you might have an inkling as to what some of those are. But like I said, I'm not going to, I'm not going to badmouth anybody. I'm here to give you my take on what I like. And hopefully it's something you'll like as well, things that you, you know, things to try. Again, it's not weird, it's not spooky, it's not creepy, but it is interesting. So every once in a while, like, yeah, if there's something interesting, but not in my normal genre of things I do, I will share it with you anyway. I'll let you guys go. I've got a lot of things to do still. So wrap this up.
If you like these videos, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to subscribe, hit the bell once. If you want notifications as to when I'm going to be posting random stuff, because I'm all over the place as far as content, I'm very eclectic because my brain works that way. I like a lot of things, so I share a lot of things. So there's plenty of things, pretty much something, almost, almost something for everybody. So check my library. There are several videos. I've been doing this about seven, probably almost eight years now, I think. Long time. So check out the library. If you don't like this, but you do like my other content, give it a look. There's plenty, like I said, there's plenty there. Um, okay. And again, please comment if you wish. Please keep it friendly. I do read the comments, not immediately, but I do read them. And if I see anything that's detrimental to the little community we've got kind of going here, um, I will delete it and block people. So keep it, keep it friendly. Keep it safe. Keep it kind. No hate speech. None of that. Okay. Again, remember to dra track responsibly. Don't track and drive. Take turns driving the hearse. Give the designated Dracula a turn if they wish to imbibe. And if it's warm and sunny where you're at, vampires, please use sunscreen and a large oh, parasol so you don't turn to ash because I would love to see you next time. Stay safe. I love you guys. Bye now.